Welcome to Code Freedom. I'm your host, Eddie Bales. Have you ever felt stuck? Have you ever felt like there's got to be more to life than the reality that you see every day? Tune in weekly, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays as we crack the codes to freedom in every area of your life. Welcome to Code Freedom. I'm your host, Eddie Bales, and this is episode seven, Mind Freedom. And can you believe we're already seven episodes in and we're only the first month in? Well, that is my goal, my friends, is to bring as much value as possible to you. So uh, thank you guys for the support. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you guys are subscribed so that you get the notifications when we do another podcast, uh, which we aim to do every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. So listen, guys, today is going to be a great episode. uh, And let me just kind of share with you where this whole thought process came from. Um, Well, I was my my family came in town this weekend and that was pretty cool. And me and my brother were driving down the road. Now, we're only about a year apart. And so, you know, I'm always the inquisitive one. I ask a lot of questions. Right. Um, And so I was asking him, I said, hey, look, you know, what's next for you? What's your what are your goals? What are your dreams? What are your passions? Like, what do you really want? Because so often I find that people just work. And do the things that they feel they have to do, but not quite do the things that they really want to do, they love to do, feel like they're called to do. And that's one of the aims and that's one of the things that I'm passionate about is helping people get to that place. Right. Um, So I was asking him some questions about that. And, you know, he mentioned that what he wanted to do, but then he also mentioned that he wanted to go back to school. And and so, you know, I kind of had a thought for a second because. Well, let me just start by saying this, Um, you know, he wanted to go back to school, but I felt like um, what he wanted to do, he didn't necessarily need to go back to school for it. Now, obviously, I'm not here to be, you know, put opinions on people or any of that, but I just wanted him to think deeper um, and just get a little bit more understanding. So um, because if you're if you're going to school for a nurse to be a nurse then you got to pass the board. If you're going to school to be an attorney, then you got to pass the bar, you know? So certain things, if you're going to be a dentist or a doctor and all those things, then you got to go to school and get those certain certifications and things of that nature. Um, But every profession and every career doesn't warrant that you you get a degree, right? And and, and let me just stop by saying, in no way am I bashing college or or, or education or any of that. Matter of fact, I have a degree from college, um, a four-year degree. Uh, But here's the deal. I'm not using it. (laughs) And uh, I was reading an interesting study. uh, And by the way, uh, you'll find this interesting. Most statistics are actually wrong. So I always tend to study the root of the statistics to make sure that it comes from a credible place. But only 27% of college graduates work in a field related to their major. And that came from the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. So I think that's pretty credible, right? But uh, the point is, you got 73% of people who went to school like I did. They got a degree and they're not using it, yet they have to pay the loans back. Um, And so that's why I wanted to ask some of these questions to him, but also I wanted to kind of bring this to you all because I feel like for so long we're in this sense of mass hypnosis where we are just, it's almost like a programming, just like what we talked about last week with the, uh, the paradigms is that we, we, we just have these ways that we do things and we never study, um, the, the, the root of it, study the fruit and you'll understand the tree, Right. You'll know a tree by the fruit that it bears. And and once you understand the fruit, you can see where the roots come from, right? You can understand the roots a little bit better. And so let's talk a little bit about a little bit about, you know, school and how it all came to be about and stuff like that. And by the way, I'm not a history buff. Um, I'm I'm getting better with that, but but I, I I did a little bit of research and so I found that in 1635. That's when the first school was started in America, and that was in Massachusetts. And it evolved over time. See, back in the day, they didn't put a big emphasis on, like, the collegiate level. 
it was more or less you learned a trade, you you understood that trade, and then you went out and you made money with it, or you even started a business uh, f- with it. Okay, um, but over time, like I said, it evolved. So um, even to a point where the Emancipation Proclamation uh, happened in 1863, and you know, slavery was a system; it was an economic system. And when the Emancipation Proclamation happened, um, that system ended. Well, not exactly. Uh, that that particular type of system ended, but then it changed to another system, which I call wage slavery, uh, which we'll talk about that in, in a little bit. But but the point is, um, I don't think that when slavery was over, you know, there was a certain group of people who made a lot of wealth from that system. And so I don't think they just threw their hands up and said, hey, it's over. Uh, let's do something else now. Well, yeah, <laughs> there's something else is let's let's transform this system into another system. And that is kind of where I'm leading to is, you know, if you look into the 1900s, um, Rockefeller and Carnegie kind of got together and uh, one of their goals was to control the economy through the school system uh, because they wanted to um, monopolize, right? Uh, Rockefeller invested $180 million in edu- in the education system. Um, if you were to equate that to today's time for with inflation, that would be $5 trillion. So you can't tell me that there wasn't a, an agenda there. Because, you know, and by the way, I'm not saying that anybody that's into philanthropic work or or giving on a major level always has to have an agenda. But I can pretty much say that he did. <laughs> In fact, um, he had a an advisor and it was Reverend Frederick T. Gates. And let's listen to uh, a quote that he said. He said, in our dreams, we have limitless resources and the people yield themselves with perfect docility to our molding hand. The present educational conventions fade from our minds and unhampered by tradition, we work our own good will upon a grateful and responsive rural folk. We shall not try to make these people or any of their children into philosophers or men of learning or of science. We are not to raise up among them authors, orators, poets, or men of letters. We shall not search for embryo great great artists, um, painters, musicians, nor will we cherish even the humbler ambition to raise up from among them lawyers, doctors, preachers, statesmen, whom we now have ample supply. So what does that say to me? That says to me that we don't want people to think for themselves. We don't want people to uh, have an imagination and be creative and 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 start businesses and 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 really be in a position where they they have free thinking. We want we want to think for them. We want to kind of control or monopolize because if they think for themselves, they could potentially start a business that can compete with what we're doing, right? And so in, in that sense, that was a monopoly, uh, a, a monopoly mindset. And so, um, you know, they were basically creating these schools for the children of the slaves. So now these children of the slaves can learn a trade and end up working in their factories. Right. And so, you know, don't get me wrong. I'm not I'm not here to be a conspiracy theorist or anything like that. But but what I'm saying is that let's let's look at some of these things and see how it's gone from year after year after year, centuries, where um, where we kind of have this thought of just going to school and, and getting a job and just working versus saying, hey, wait a minute, let, let, let me think for myself. How can I start a business and how can I uh, not so much go against the system? But how can I be my own economy? How can I control the narrative and shift the narrative instead of letting it control me? Right. So that that's that's all I really wanted to share with you guys today is that I could go a lot deeper on this. Um, but but let me say this, too. Um, you know, we we've been taught all our lives to go to school, get good grades and get a good job. And I can think of so many uh, people who have been successful and didn't have a college degree, right? 
Um, there's so many of them. Like I'm talking billionaires, millionaires. There's a long list of them. Maybe I'll bring that list to you guys uh, later one day. But th- but the point that I'm making is that um, it's it's t- it's a different day and age where you were, were taught to go to school. And and by the way, when you get that job and hold on, no, most people don't keep a job for like 20 years like it used to be back in the day. Things are different. The world is evolving. Times are changing and we have to adjust. But we also have to look at the history of things. We have to study and understand why things were the way they were and why things still are the way they are. And we have to find our path, right? And so, like I said, I'm I'm not bashing the education system or any of that because I think that we all need to be educated. But let me just say this. You know, one of my mentors, he says, um, well, well, Malcolm X, he said, my alma mater is books. And one of my mentors, Jim Rohn, he says, uh, formal education will make you a living, but self-education will make you a fortune. And this is pretty much the gist of what I'm talking about is let's self-educate ourselves. Let's read books. Let's listen to audio. Let's listen to podcasts. Plug. Thanks for listening to this podcast. Um, but but let's study and let's show ourselves approved. Let's 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 make sure we know the fruit of what was what we're what we're doing and not just fall into this rhythmic cycle of living to work and working to live and not even knowing why we're doing it other than we were just told to or that's what everyone else is doing, right? You know, I heard someone say if everyone else is going in one direction, you go in the other direction. And it took me a little while to understand that, but now I finally understand why he said that, because the masses tend to have a sense of hypnosis where, again, we do things and don't even know why we do it versus we we stop and think. And that's why I wanted to bring this podcast to you, because this is about mind freedom. This is about thinking for ourselves. This is about being in a position of strength where we can control the narrative. So I hope you guys got some value from it. Feel free to share it with as many people as possible. And I appreciate you all for tuning in. God bless and have a wonderful day. Thanks for tuning in. Appreciate you guys for listening. Um, Definitely feel free to take a screenshot of this episode. Tag me in it on Instagram uh, or Facebook or wherever. You find me on social media. I would love to give you a shout out. Hey, you might even get a prize. Who knows? But uh, excited that you had a chance to take a listen. I hope you got a lot of value. And uh, definitely feel free to uh, give us five stars as well as a review. Uh, Show us some love and we appreciate you. God bless you all and see you all over the top.